Okay, so good morning or afternoon, whatever it is at this time. Um, today, what, we, what I would like to do with you is an exercise. Hmm? Uh, an exercise on drafting, uh, at least starting uh, to draft a uh, usability testing plan. So we said last week that the first step in usability testing is planning. That is the most important, actually, point because it's where you set up the tone for the entire study. So you plan everything and then you need to execute what you are planning and then you need to analyze the results stemming from the execution of what you planned for. So, today we are going to at least draft together a plan, a sample plan. We will not finish an entire plan. It will be longer than one hour and something that we have, especially if we try to reason upon the various things that we can put here. But planning, well done planning, is something that require time. So today we are just using this document, basically. No slides. Just the document as speaking and reflecting on this thing. And this document, by the way, is linked in the, on the website, on the calendar for the schedule of today. So if you want, you can open it. There are already two people that open it. Uh, but it's in view only, but you can, if it's difficult to read, you can also follow there. Uh, so we need to decide to specify what is this, what we are planning for, hmm, which platform, which system, which application we are planning for doing usability testing. And I will come back in a second, but first of all, I would like to open these three links here hmm? and have a look with you to these three links here. Hmm? So let's start from these. Yes. This is a, a short article, quite short article, uh, from Nielsen Norman Group. We mention it a lot of time that show you how to turn your goal, your user goal, what your system, what your application should support or enable user to do, mainly in tasks. In tasks that are not only suitable for your goal, but also written in a way to avoid issues with, uh, with your participants. So as a reminder, we said that we need five participants, mostly, around five participants, and we can go with around 10 tasks for a session of usability study, usability testing. So selecting participants, selecting the target population is, again, something that you all know because it's the same thing that we did for need finding. So nothing really new there. And also how to create tasks is something that um, you have, you should have done uh, for the heuristic evaluation and uh, it's something that we covered with the task analysis. But let's make a sort of summary and also a step forward with tasks. Hmm? So, uh, Nielsen brings here an example of areas for which you can do a usability testing on this website, on his own website. And he said that on this website, their user must be able to accomplish three main goals, find article, 
on a specific topic. Sign up for a seminar and learn about consulting services. So these three things, find article about some topics, sign up for a seminar, a mailing list, something, and learn, learn, up, learn about consulting services, the, the things that bring money to them so that they can continue working. So these are the three main goals for this website, according to Nielsen. And clearly, the website has many more options. So there is consulting here, there is articles that are two other things, there is also this training and events that probably is, are bigger than just the seminar, and there are books that are not even mentioned in those three main goals. Uh, also about is not mentioned, and probably there are also other functionality, other things like login in the system, but none of these is in the three main goals. Hmm? So the first thing when thinking about task on a usability testing is asking yourself in your application, in your system, which could be also very, very big at that moment, which are the things that we want to focus on now? Which are the three, two, four main goals hmm? from which we can derive some tasks uh, around those three goals, hmm? like three, four tasks for each of these topics. Hmm? So around 10 again. Hmm? So first thing, asking yourself which are the goal of your application and which are the goal that the user should accomplish with your application during, hmm, for which you want to evaluate them with uh, evaluated application or the system or the user interface with a usability testing. Hmm? That again is for catching usability problem, usability issues. Hmm? So Nielsen found three of these things for their website. You can find probably other two, three, four main goal in your prototype or in any system that you want to, to, to to analyze, to, to put under evaluation. So this is the first thing hmm, that should guide your definition of the task. Hmm? Asking yourself what is or what are the most important things that every user must be able to accomplish on your site, app, app system, interface, whatever. Starting from that, there. Maybe your application have 11,000 pages and a lot of functions, and you cannot create 10 tasks for covering everything clearly. So you need to select. You need to start from the important mandatory part for at, at least a first round. Then you can do maybe another usability testing one month later, two months later, etc., with the other less important things once you have figured out the most important things. But first of all, start with the most important things. So first question to ask. Uh, Nielsen then suggests that often it's good in creating tasks to start with a scenario to bring context to the user. Uh, I mentioned this last time in the lecture, saying that tasks sometimes are introduced by a scenario, by a brief description, to give context. So here there is an example of a scenario. So the facilitator is saying to each testers before giving them the tasks, or maybe this scenario is embedded in one single task if it's just related to just one task and not multiple tasks. You're planning a vacation to New York City from the 3rd to the 14th of March. You need to buy both airfare and hotel. Hmm? So this is the context. What do you want to do? A vacation. 
Where? New York City. When? March. How long? Three. The 3rd of March up to the 14th of March. Not three years of vacation, not one day, not one weekend. A specific amount of time that is different. And what you need to do? You need the ticket for the plane and also the hotel. You don't need a guide tour on the city. You don't need a museum. You don't need public transportation. You just need airfare and hotel. So the task here that is for uh, evaluating website for travel, clearly, is go to the American Airlines website and to the JetBlue Airlines website and see who has the best deal for your New York trip, March 3 up to 14, hotel plus flight. So giving context before giving the task. So in this case, the context is just for one single task. In other case, the context could be bigger. So maybe you are planning a vacation, you need to buy both airfare and hotel, and the first task is go and see who are the best deal. And then the next task could be buy the best deal that you have found. And then another task. But everything is located to your own place, where you are, to New York City, that period, specific period, flights plus hotel. To give context to the user, to help the user, the participant, to immediate in the task and in the application. Instead of saying, oh, you're planning a vacation somewhere, in some dates, pick one. And it's also helping you to assess whether the task is completed successfully or not. Because here, you complete the task. If you find the best deal in one of the two websites for a vacation in New York, March 3, March 14. If you find the best deal for a vacation in Rome in December through those two websites, you are probably doing the task, finding the best deal, but you are missing all the details. Mm? So some errors were in the middle. Mm? And then Nielsen give you three task writing tips. So once you identify the goal, from those goals try to Im Im imagine, imagine the tasks. And then this task could also have some scenarios and context attached to them. And he also say, try to make the task realistic. So let's imagine that your user goal is browse product offering and purchase one of them. Go somewhere, buy something. Browse the list and buy something. And say, a task could be purchase a pair of orange Nike running shoes. This is a task. You know what you want to do. You want to go on this website, on this application, look for running shoes of Nike that are orange. Right? This seems a reasonable task. But Nisa say, say this is a poor task. Why this is a poor task to you? Because it doesn't mention the price, could be a factor, sure. But here we are about realism. How many of you will buy orange running shoes? Nobody, no one. So make the task realistic. Since it's maybe difficult, then your participants will normally in the reality, buy orange Nike running shows. Just don't give those details. 
just don't force something that is unrealistic for many of the participants. So these plus, we can also be interested in the amount of money. So a better task is buy a pair of shoes for less than $40. Here we have, yes, the money attached, but most, most importantly, you can make the task realistic. Each participant can buy the pair of shoes that they prefer. Orange, green, yellow, white, black, no matter. Nike, Adidas, something else. Again, not forcing towards a specific brand. And still you have control on understanding if the task is completed or not. Because in the end, this person has to buy a pair of shoes, not pants, not a t-shirt, but shoes for less than $40. So if it cost 45, it's not, they didn't find the right shoes. You can also add for a better task if you want, in this better task, if you want running shoes. Maybe your application, your system, your website is about running stuff. So you want to enforce that. Hmm? But again, if instead the website is more general, why forcing people in saying running? Maybe everybody, every of your participant uh, hate running and prefer cycling or other sports. So don't force the user in creating context, in creating scenario, try to take the task realistic as they would possibly do. So balancing the needs of details to understand whether the task is completed or not with the need of making something comfortable, let's say, without pressing them to make choice that doesn't seem particularly realistic. Do not detach too much the user from the interface to keep them engaged. Uh, the second suggestion, make the task actionable. And here it uses another example, movie website. Hmm? So find the movie and show times. And here again, we have a poor task and a better task. And the poor task is, you want to see a movie Sunday afternoon. Go to website and tell me where you would click next. Why this is not actionable? Because you are just asking people, tell me things. Find a, web, find a movie and tell me where you click. There is no action there on the website, on the application. Again, the goal is discovering usability problem in the interface. So you, you should have the user, when possible, interact with the interface. So your task should be actionable not just look at things and tell me what you think, but look at things, and when you find that, do whatever you want hmm, with this movie. Open the description, hmm, et cetera. So a better task in this case is use the website to find a movie you'll be interested in, again, interested in the realism, you are more, uh, you like more horror movies, so you can look for those kind of movies. You like more uh, comedy, so the rather you are interested in, whatever you are interested in, to be seen on Sunday afternoon. Don't tell me how to click next. Just find the movie hmm, that you would be interested in to see. Hmm. And here there is a short description. And most importantly, this is one of not only clarity, but this is one of the most common error uh, when you do these kind of things for the first time, for the first time at least, is don't suggest the answer in your task. Hmm? So if your goal is look up grades, look up scores, exam scores, a poor task would be 
you want to see the results of your exam, go to the website, sign in, and tell me where you would click to get your list of exam. So again, there is the problem, like before, tell me where you would click, is not actionable, but most importantly here, you are telling the user, how, the participant, how to do the work. Go to the website, sign in. You are giving the solution. If you want the user to look for results of exam, you, you don't have to say, okay, log in there with the us username and password, and then um, click here and click that and see the table, etc. This is guiding too much. Again, you want to discover usability problem. If you tell the user what to do exactly, you will discover less problem because you are guiding too much the person. So better task should be on the website, clearly look up the results of your exam and leave the participants figure out where they are so that you can see if it's easy to find those information. If it's hard, if the user clicks 11 different tabs before finding the, the right one, or if immediately go to the exam session and see the results. Hmm? So realistic, actionable, and without, to, without giving the solution to the task in the description of the task. And here, there are other examples, like a poor task, make an appointment with your dentist, a better task, make an appointment for next Tuesday at 10 a.m. with your dentist that is named Dr. Peterson. Hmm? Again, realism, maybe not for Dr. Peterson, maybe it's not your dentist, but sort of realism, and the right amount of detail also to understand whether the task can be is successfully complete or not. And if you, want, if you are interested in seeing whether this person make an appointment on the right day, the right time, so using the right steps, the right options, here you're forcing the user to find a specific time and a specific place on the agenda of this specific doctor, not just book any appointment from here up to the end of the agenda the first one that you find. Hmm? So this makes everything also more comparable between different uh, evaluators. Hmm? Hmm? Okay. This is briefly what this page say. It's, it's linked there so you can clearly look at it every time you want. The other two documents are two examples since we, are, we cannot do um, a full planning, these are two examples of usability testing scripts, plan. Mm -hmm. Quite different. And there are a lot of commonalities, but they are still quite different. Uh, so this is a script. Mm -hmm. Only a script. There is no the planning part. The other one is more complete. So you see that a script uh, starting with how the session will be. First thing, welcome. Meet the participant and introduce the participants to other people. Then these are notes for the facilitator. Remember facilitator. Your purpose, the purpose here is testing a website. Remember to say to the participants that we are testing the website, not you. And remember to mention that we are recording you and that we need a complete profile. Hmm? Um, Etc. And then hmm, you see after, in this case, the, the initial part is not well written, it's not clearly detailed written, just notes for the facilitator that will create a, a conversation, greeting the user, saying you are not, we are not here to test you, but the, the, the website, etc. And then it start the actual script, the actual test with tasks. And you see 
this is something really for the facilitator. The first thing that you see in the page is big, start recording. Don't forget to start recording. So it's something that for the facilitator to do the session in the best way possible. And then there is task number one. Hmm? Task number one, written as the facilitator will say it to the participants. The facilitator will say this exact word for every participant. So to present to the task in the same way for everybody. I'm going to show you the home page of website. You can look for a few seconds only, then I will ask you some question. At this stage, don't click, just look, okay? This is the sentence. So clearly this is a strange task. It's not actionable, it's not realistic. It's just to have an impression. It's something that sometimes hmm, is used in usability testing. Just an impression about the overall design, the overall page. Just the first impression of it. Do you like it, don't you like it, etc. Hmm? And notice here, it say participants look at the page for five to 10 seconds. So the participants, the facilitators here looking for five to 10 seconds, exactly. Not one hour, not 15 minutes, not three minutes. Five to 10 seconds. And after five to six seconds, say, okay, stop looking. And there are the questions that were promised. What's your first impression of website? What website is it? What's it about? What, who do you think is it for, etc. So in this case, these people decided not to say, not to introduce the website, saying, oh, this is a website for buying uh, airplane tickets, but just to get an impression, the answer from the user. And this is a, a, a task. Hmm? Then there is another task about the second look, etc. And then, before starting with the other task, the facilitator noted for, especially from him or herself, thinking aloud and said to the, to the participants, for the rest of the tasks, task three up to the end, you will need to think aloud and gives the explanation of what it means, think aloud. You must tell me what you are thinking. It will feel strange, but it's very important. I'm not going to show you what I mean by think aloud, and we'll use another example as a website, and open another website and show the participants what, what this think aloud in this website in a task, hmm? so that the participants could have more uh, experience of like driving li license on what is think aloud. And then, task three, navigating from the home page. This is not the task clearly given to the user, to the participants, but it's just a reminder for the facilitator that the third task is about navigation from the home page. And here, there is another note for the facilitator, like start recording, that is get browser to the home page, because now you are on the driving license website. So you change website, so you need to go back to the home page, not to any random page, just to that specific page. Hmm? And we're going to start on the university home page. Your task is to find the career page within this website. Remember to say what you're thinking. Please start. Hmm? So here there is no time attached, otherwise it will be written. You have to complete the task in 10 minutes. Here, there is not this limit. But here is, uh, the task is find the career page within the website. So you cannot go on Google and look for university name, career page. You have to, to work from the home page what you want to, do, what would you have. And then task four, we are not going to read all of them. And then task four, there is a task about the career page Etc. Mm, with some question, and then there is a post-test question, and then there is another note for the facilitator. Now you have to remember to stop recording. Mm. So this is an example 
quite short example of a script, and then there is thank you and the review, hmm, the debriefing session with the observer that were there listening, observing to everything. Hmm? So this is a short example of a script. Hmm? This other hmm, document is a usability test plan. This is like 20 pages, so it's very, very long. You don't need to create a usability test plan so long, so detailed. But it will be various pages long. Just imagine that you have to write 10 different tasks, probably in a table, and that will be one page already. So it will be some pages. And here, well, there is the index so that is not really needed, a summary. Uh, problem statement, so this is, was a document for also other to read, not only for the facilitator. Um, and there is the user profile uh, for which they derive hmm, recruiting participants. Hmm. So they choose people age 18 to 29 years old, education, specific education, undergraduate college student, hmm. so in the bachelor degree without a degree from a university. Gender, mixed. Use computer daily for activities, in addition to email and social media. So if you are 19 years old, undergraduate students, female, but you just use computer for email and social media, you cannot be participants here. You have to shop online, you have to have purchases textbook and never use betterwordsbooks.com, that is the website that is under evaluation here, but you are by both ebooks in your life or interested at least in learning about electronic books. And then there is methodology number of participants, length of the session, okay, we plan that the welcome will last 10 minutes, then the task, 40, and then the post-test questionnaire, 10 minutes. And then there are the role and responsibility. Again, this is written for others to be read. Hmm? So this is likely a company paying somebody for doing a usability testing, and this is the, the document, the report, that the people doing usability testing go back to the company, so it has a lot of details. But these details are, can be useful for us to understand hmm, who did what and in which order. Hmm. So here we have a moderator and two observer, basically. Uh, artifact, what we are going to use. We need the script. We need the pre-test questionnaire. We need to print or to make available the pre-test questionnaire. We also are going to use a post-task questionnaire and a post-test questionnaire. And then we have some cards for comments and a high gay eye guide, so we need a net tracker hmm, with some diagram. And we are going also to give $25 for each participant to participate in this study hmm, as an incentive to participate. Hmm. So if you do everything up to the end, you will get $25 just for doing the study. And then there are tasks with scenarios hmm, attached. So here, for instance, uh, so what we call task is more probably the scenario that we put here. You want to find a book written by, by your professor. Dr. Carol Barnum. This is the task that the user, the participant, receive. Find a book written by your professor, so realism, Dr. Carol, Carol Barnum. And the task, the main task, are clearly search by author, because you want a book from that specific person, and add a copy to the cart for purchase. And they also add an estimated time that is five minutes to complete the task. Hmm? So uh, probably a slightly better task would have been you want to find and buy 
or you want to buy a book written by your professor so that there is also the add to the cart but it's also very reasonable not to have buy here because buying means also paying instead they were just interested in looking for a book and putting putting it in the cart in the shopping cart in the shopping bag not paying for the book not delivering the book that is instead included in the buying the full buying experience so here there is a lot of uh, some the, uh, the other task and the methods, hmm? the, the metrics. We are going to measure the time to complete task. We expect five minutes per task, but we are going to measure it. Uh, the number of people able to complete the task, the number of attempts required to complete the task, how many click the user did before searching by authors and putting the book on the in the cart hmm? so the number of attempts before doing the task correctly in the right order maybe the task completed in the end but maybe the person search for many keyword before finding the search by author hmm? so not critical errors and then the results from the various questionnaire etc hmm? then there is the test environment the equipment we are going to use computer running Windows 7 with a 19 inches monitors microphone telephone camera eye tracker etc so everything that you need hmm? well a timeline and uh, well the deliverable for for the company uh, and there well there is some personas here and then there are the questionnaire hmm? in the appendixes there are all the questionnaire so that it's, it's attached to the plan. So you can just print them out and give to the participants to fill them out. So all the questionnaires are here attached to the plan, including the permission form, including the consent form. Everything that is needed is here. So that they are using the system usability scale, so the system usability scale is here. So that we, with this document, you can, everybody can redo the usability testing. Mm. They are missing the script, mm. like in the other example. So what the person say, to what the facilitators say to every participant, line by line, task by task. Mm. So this is something that here in this document is missing. Mm. It's not mandatory to have that, but often you have the script together with the plan. Here, we just have the plan very, very detailed with a lot of information, probably because it's more of a report. Okay, so these are, hmm, just to give you, again, an overview on tasks and an overview, an example, an additional example on, on this, since we, we cannot complete this, well, not sure, surely not in, in the time we have, but also in one hour and a half. So we are going to start drafting uh, a simple plan hmm, for the Portale della Didattica. Why? Because you all know it well, very well, maybe, because you use it daily, probably. Hmm? Some of you since years, so you are very familiar with that. So we can together derive tasks for them for it because you know well hmm? so it's easier to generate task for this than not a random application that maybe just five of you knows and we are focusing on the logged in part okay not the website but what you have in your student profile hmm? in your student page So, let me remove this page here. So, first thing, participants. Who will be our participants? I see at least two different categories 
of participants. Very, very different. But we, ha we have to choose one of these two categories. One are students, and the other ones are teachers. Mm, we use the, sa the same website. This is slightly different, but it's the same website. So do we want to focus on students? I would say that is easier for you. Mm? So target population, students. Not students, polytechnical students. Hmm? We are going to recruit. We can choose, actually. Hmm? If we want polytechnical students, so people that already have experience with the website, or non-polytechnical students. So people that are university students but never seen the Portale da Didattica before. Because their own university use other things. So they have different perspective. Hmm? So what do you want to choose? Student from Polytechnico, student not from Polytechnico, a mix. Uh, also mix is a possibility. With five participants, maybe not mixing too much, but Answers, opinions, polytechnical students or not? Why? W which is the advantage and disadvantage if you want to choose polytechnical students, They're not just you in general? If you want, you can answer clearly, but. Yes, polytechnical students have an advantage that is the familiarity. You all know very well the website, so you know what to expect. And this is also the disadvantage in choosing polytechnical students because you already have an opinion, a mental model of how the Portale della Didattica works. So you probably know some shortcut, some things that doesn't work or if I click here three times, the third time it will work. Or if I refresh the page on my computer and not on the other computer, or on this browser, on this other, etc. Some tricks that you have learned on yourself. Hmm. Which is the possible problem with not polytechnical students? So let's say University of Turin students that doesn't use the Portale della Didattica, they will use something be built with Moodle, I suppose. They cannot log in, but you can, so you, you, you can log in f for them. That, that's, that's a technical, let's say, problem, um, but but let's say that it is connected to this, no? Realism. You cannot look for your own exam because you are not enrolled here, so you don't see your exam. So you need uh, more context, a bigger scenario. So, oh, you are a computer engineering student, male, uh, and you need to, to check out the exam of your past semester hmm? because you are logged in as this person. So, this person needs to do a, uh, an effort in imagination, mm. for sure. And the other things that could be tricky to consider, if you are, this is also probably valid for students in Erasmus here that doesn't use the portale in their own home university.
yes, yeah, some tasks, you cannot do some tasks because if you are from another university moving, uh, then you, you don't have access to the history because you don't have history here. Yeah, that could be, but that also is the answer of the question, which are the most important task goals that we want to have in a web website? Is looking at the history of the past career one of these most fundamental goal or not? If it is, yes, this is a problem. If not, who cares in, in a sense? Another problem, which is still, we, this is the same that Polytechnic students have with the Portale, is that the others have a mental model of their own system. So they expect this system to work like them, like they are. And surely there are similarities between all these systems, but there are also things that are very, very different from one to another. Hmm? So that could be another, and uh, things to consider. Again, you don't want to say that the portal is better or worse than another system, but you want to get usability issues, usability problem. Hmm? So in doing that, if you look for only for technical students, you know that you probably are skipping some problem because they already have experience with the portal and they will act as exp uh, expert people. If you look at University of Torino students, they will know nothing about the portal, but they will act the first run at least as they will act in the original in their own system. So if in their own system material is in a certain place or is called in a certain way, they will look for that label here. Clearly, because it's the first, they, they use that for a while. Hmm? So both are good part of the population because both are expert in the task. Both are students, both are university students, but with this trade-off. Hmm? So, to avoid the tricks, since we are more interested in usability, let's say that we want other university students. Hmm? So not polytechnical. And, and we know that they will bring their knowledge in doing the task. So some of the things that we'll discover will probably be differences with respect to the system that they are going to use normally. So then age, age. Clearly we are restricting university students, age. All university students, bachelor degree, master degree, both. Yes, that's a good strategy. If we are choosing people that are expert, but not too much expert, we can avoid problem like, okay, I'm using Moodle since five years, and now you are telling me to use this. Hmm? So we can minimize that. So, so let's say 19, 23, 22. Hmm? So early in the beginning. It is not that, well, it's not always better. Hmm? So w this could be one way, this one could be one way to minimize that problem. So looking for people expert in the university, but not too much, not to bring their expertise from system A to our system. That could be, and yes, in making that choice, we, don't learn from people that have learned about other tricks, other uh, way of seeing, have other needs that could be of improvement for the portal. But if you think that we have to recruit like five people in one study, we, we cannot really 
get probably everybody. Hmm? So another option could be, okay, let's keep the age wider, bachelor and master, and let's try to get up and up. Hmm? Three bachelor degree students and two master degree students so that we can both incorporate some experience and, but with five people is very, very no? little the number of. Uh, expertise with, do we have some expertise here that were needed? Let's say expertise with the university, uh, term, terminology. Hmm? We probably need a good expertise on university terminology, exams, semesters, credits, all this stuff here probably appear. Hmm? So let's say good, and then we, we need to understand what is good in when we recruit people. Other kind of expertise. Let's say no for now. And do you want to have some degree of usage of computer? I would say yes, yes. It's, it's implicit, probably, and it's expected in that age, probably, but yes. Hmm? We want, um, let's say, daily usage of computer, and web browser. And, and then we can list, like in the other um, plan that was, um, they don't need just to use email and social media, but they also need to use these other application. We can also build up some and then, and then we can continue, if you want, hmm, to give other details. This is the same thing that you did for need finding phase, actually. Hmm. So we, we don't need to, to spend much time here. But you, you, it's, it's the same thing. You can decide which are your participants. Keep in mind that you are going to uh, recruit five people. Hmm. So you, if you have a too large base, you, too diverse base, you end up having one for each of the categories that you have selected. And yes, you have different perspective, but you add a little bit of randomness in this, in one single usability testing study. Hmm? Equipment, what we need to do the test? We need a computer. Then, a timer. What is a time? A stopwatch. More important than a stopwatch? We just need a computer? Internet connection. So imagine that you are going to give this list to another person and say, I need this thing in a room. So you need to be precise. Hmm? Pre enough. So a computer, yes, I bring you your computer. Oh, there is no Wi-Fi here. You didn't ask for internet access. So computer with internet access, um, and, and the browser, let's say, let's call it a modern browser, just to speed up thing. So we can say, okay, with a browser like Chrome version X. So we can say computer with X and Chrome version X, whatever. I don't know which version is, 100. So we are going to use Chrome, not Firefox, not Edge, not other things, just Chrome. Uh, stopwatch, done, other things that we can, may need. Yes, if we want to record, we can say, uh, microphone, uh, camera, if you want to do audio and video recording, uh, and etc. Hmm? Pens for the questionnaire, 
for filling up the questionnaire, if we have questionnaire, etc. And, and etc. You can continue this list. It's a list of things that you plan to use. And you can also start creating the task and then coming back here and adding things to the equipment or removing things to the equipment. Hmm. We are going to do it in a linear way, but you can jump hmm, from one page to the other to, to fill. It's not written in, in, in the stone, this thing here. Artifacts. Yes. Yes, mm, uh, uh, asking for a um, mock-up account for a given user for doing just usability testing with maybe some courses selected in some way, exam with specific grades, etc., could be part of the equipment or the artifacts so of, let's say here, some sort of pre-requirement, mm, a requirement before starting. You, you can also add another, you know, line, requirements is not, uh, is not that. The equipment typically is more hardware equipment, hardware equipment with their configuration. The artifacts are more the documents, the questionnaire that you need to have, and these are prerequisite. So you can have, then you can probably find a better name, but we can call it requirements. Uh, uh, fake student account with these details. Hmm? It makes sense. So instead of using one of your own, just make up um, a student account with specific details that you choose after doing the task or doing, during doing the task so that you can match what uh, the person is seeing and what you need. Right, artifacts. Which document we would like to use? Well, for sure, we, sa we need a consent form. That's, let's say, mandatory. Then we can use a screener or not. A screener is a questionnaire that decides whether the participants can do the test or not from a screening of the participants. So this could be done at the beginning of the study. Like I have the screener questionnaire, I invite 10 people. I ask 10 people to fill up this questionnaire, maybe online, then I collect this questionnaire and I say, okay, you come, you come, you know. You can, you not, etc. So screening of a questionnaire or you can recruit directly people that you already know that they are matching these categories, these characteristics that you are listening here. Hmm? So that could, could be of one use or not. Hmm? Other things that we probably would need, independently from the screener. Now, do you want to put a screener here or not? There is no right answer or wrong answer. This is just answer in this case. Okay, no screener because you are going to go in the corridor and say, how old are you? Okay, in the corridor to uni University of Turing and bring people in this way. Okay, fine. Um, so probably we would need without a screener a background questionnaire just to collect biographical information, to remember biographical information and collect together with the rest of the, the results, uh, or let's call it a pre-test questionnaire. Mm? If there are other questions that make sense asking you before doing the test. Other things. Other artifacts. Well, the other artifacts could be, do we want to have a post-task questionnaire? 
do we want to have a post-test questionnaire? And I would say, that's it. These two things. Do we want a post-task questionnaire? Who knows? Uh, it also depends on, you know, yes, it could depend on the task, but also it's a design decision, meaning that if you have a post-task questionnaire, you typically have a post-task questionnaire for all your tasks. So you are designing to give participants maybe the single question, uh, but you are going to give it every, for every task. So it's also how long the study will be. So partly could depend from task, but also a, a more a decision taken before. Could be also taken after, but it's a decision that impact all the, the study. So let's say that you don't want a post-test questionnaire. And let's just use a post-test questionnaire. That could be, the system is a bit scale. In our case. Again, could be the NASA TLX, could be the, the system is a bit scale, could be a custom made questionnaire. Hmm? Just in this example, it makes sense to use the system is a bit scale since we want to uh, get the usability of this. And then here, hmm, there is the task. Typically, tasks are written at table like this with an index, number of tasks, the test of the task, the success criteria for each task, and whether or not you are using a methodology, thinking aloud, a cooperative evaluation, or not in the task. Hmm? And then here, it's just a table with six, but it could be longer, shorter. Shorter, difficult, longer, probably. Uh, and then the matrix that you want to collect. Hmm? So for instance, we can say we would like to collect the time on task. We will have the answer, let's say the questionnaire, the answer from the questionnaire as our, our, our matrix, and I don't know, let's say this two. It depends on the task. Here really also depends on the task. And there is the script. Hmm? I put here a, a draft of the script in, in the format in which the, the facilitator reads everything. Hmm? So, hi, name of the participant. I am, name of the facilitator. And today we're going to hmm, explore the system that Polytechnic of the Torino students use for managing their career, managing their study, their exam, etc. Hmm? Remember that we are here to test the Portale della Didattica, hmm? this, this website not you, et cetera. Hmm? Then at a certain point, do you have any question, et cetera. At a certain point, please fill out this document for giving up permission to video recording, audio recording, collect your personal information, collect your name, and we are going to, uh, you, you agree to participate to the study and you know that you can leave the study in any moment during this half an hour. Hmm? And here you can also write the study will last around one hour, half an hour, 50 minutes, so the time that is expected the people to, to have. Mm -hmm. So if you have any pre-test questionnaire, it's the right moment to, to give after the consensus, before the, consens the consent form is just welcoming the person. Mm -hmm. No task, no user interface, no nothing, because if they say no to the consent, you cannot start with the task, with the test. And then you can give the person the questionnaire and you can have a first hmm, task number zero. Now you can have a look and explore, let's say the website for three minutes. Hmm. So freely looking around on the website for three minutes. It's not mandatory, right? It's something that if you want, it, it can be done. 
often is be done, like an exploratory stage at the beginning for minutes, seconds, etc. And then there is task one, task two, task three, etc. And if you have, if you need to have some notes, like start the recording, you can have also those kind of of notes. Hmm? So this is actually the script, whatever is used for the facilitator to doing better hmm, the, the session. Hmm? And what you need hmm, during the study is basically the script and the artifacts. And so all the rest of the plan is probably something that you don't need during the execution of the study because the script contains already all the information that you have to say or have to remember, like start the recording, etc. So let's imagine some tasks. So let's start, it's not written here, but let's start with the question that Nielsen gave us. Which are, let's say, which is the most, for, for time purpose, let's say which is the most single most important goal that the students must accomplish on the Portal della Didattica. Just one. Which is the most important things to you that every student, every student must accomplish with the logged in version of the Portal della Didattica. Yeah, that is the login. After login in. What is the, the, the most important things that you have to do that you want to accomplish, not which task, but which is, which is your goal? Book for the exam is a task. Applying to what? You don't have the teaching portal to apply. You have another system. On, on the logged in. Get access? That is slightly more than a task. Uh, but let's say, okay, let's use this. Um, manage hmm, the material of a single course. Hmm, that is all the information related to a single course. Okay, so do, do you have in your mind, right, the Portal Didactic, I don't need to open it. No, you don't want to see it here, okay. Um, okay, so now, we are speaking about courses, information about courses. So we are not speaking about exams, we are not speaking about secretary, we are not speaking about careers, we are not speaking about anything else. The first goal that every student must have is handling the um, course information, materials, video lecture, all things that are related to a single course. So, first task. Hmm? You, you can imagine you can start from the logged in version. So you already have on the screen, in the script, the facilitator will put a web page with the logged in version, the home page of the logged in version of the Portal della Didattica. Hmm? And you want to access the material, I don't know what. We need to, to do the task, we need to create a task. But you, you are interested in the material of a course that is actually using hmm, the Portal della Didattica for the material. So not like this course here, but of course that they really use, they put there the slides, the, not only also the video lecture as we did, but also the slides and other, the, the news. So a course that probably use it a lot, properly, as expected, all the functions. With not the forum, but everything else probably yes. First task, you are in the home page and you want that the participants. The mm -hmm. 
Yes, and the task is. Okay. Um, let's make it a little bit more actionable. Actionable. Hmm? It could be a starting point. Hmm? But then we can probably make it a little bit more actionable. Since we are interested in the material of a single course, we can, for instance. Too much. Exactly. So let's say, find the course. Hmm? So there is a mix between uh, at least uh, see everything and uh, just see one. Hmm? That is the one that I, I would go after to download the material, etc. Hmm? So let's say find the realism, not find a course. Hmm? Which course? Let's say find the yeah, the human-computer interaction. Of course. Hmm? Among your courses, maybe not, because you are already suggesting where to look at on the page, in the list of your courses, so find the human-computer interaction course. Uh, success criteria. Should be something measurable, in a way. Hmm? The task is successfully complete when? Exactly. Success criteria, the participants clicks on, no, on the course link. If you want, in, in five seconds, so you are not expecting that this task lasts more than X seconds, one minute. You can also have an estimate time. It could be strict for, for the success. So if, it's, if you say here, the participant clicks on the link of the course in one minute, we mean that after one minute, if the participant doesn't click on the course, the task is not successfully complete. So the task is failed. Mm -hmm. So if you put the time here, the time is really a criteria for success or not. No, uh, yes and no. So the open could be an alternative. The problem with open is that you probably say open a link, open a page, so it's too much on the, on the system. Uh, so yeah, find could be probably improved with another verb. Yes, you can specify, find the, not, not the front page, the, the, the course information. Hmm? So you are here, find the course information. Or so you can specify which tab, hmm, for instance, is in, in the course. Hmm? Uh, do you want to use some methodology? Probably not. Hmm? We are interested in any particular mental process in this clicking a link probably won't happen too much. It's, there is a list and the first half of the page, you just have to click on this list. It's quite visible, that part, so probably there will be nothing important. And here, somewhere here, we can also listen the critical error that we are expecting and the non-critical error. So here, the task is quite simple. The critical error is not clicking. There is nothing else to do. If we change it in find the information on the course, then a critical error could 
not finding the information, so clicking the page or not. Mm? And, and then we can also have non-critical errors. In this case, probably not a lot. Yes, uh, non-critical error, which could be one non-critical error here for this task. So non-critical errors are errors that are recoverable and the task can be completed after this. Clicking the, the wrong course and coming back and clicking the right one. So in that case, that becomes a non-critical error. If the participant clicks on the wrong course and tell you, I've done, that is a critical error because the task is not completed. Hmm? They opened a page, but not the right one. Hmm? Then, we are in the page, hmm? and we want another task from that page. We can either go back and quit or continue within the page. Check the course materials. Something maybe a little bit more difficult. Can you? No, no, there are there. Um, I don't know who is, I don't know if you can download it. No, let's say watch, so that is easier. Watch. How can we improve that? Giving a specific video lecture. So let's say watch the latest, for instance. And remember, before the, all that, you can also give a scenario to the user. So users are not, as we said before, users are not part of the university. So you can say, okay, now you are a 22 years old student enrolled at Politecnico di Torino in computer engineering, mechanical engineering, whatever mm, you are done in the, so in this case, computer engineering because human computer interaction. Uh, and mm, so giving the context. And you logged in on the website on your profile. Mm, and the first task is find the course, the course information, whatever. The second, the second task is watch the first, the latest video lecture of the course. So again, non-critical error and critical errors. The lecture isn't the last. Other errors? Sorry. I, there are, oh, really, um, on the wrong one. Yeah, that could be. So that could be non-critical if then it's able to, to find the right uh, video lecture. So in this case, probably you need to specify or either you don't care which one, mm, if there are two categories that are not on the same page, let's say, or you need to specify if you want to say the virtual classroom, but without saying virtual classroom or, or the other one. Um, another error that could be also a critical error. Yeah, everything could be possible as, as errors, but it would be maybe hard to imagine that if you are in the page of the single year you got in the page, yes, probably can, but. 
but you're in the page of the course, so yeah, you need to go out and go in. It's possible again, but not really probable. Yeah, that could be non-critical errors that bring you, uh, so clicking on the video lecture tab, uh, on the virtual classroom tabs, uh, thinking that the video lecture are there and not seeing another tab, but these are not critical, clearly not critical if the user is able. So like downloading, let's imagine that it's possible, downloading and watching on your computer the downloaded version. That is a critical error because you here mean, mean watching online, right? The, the video lecture in the page, not downloading and open it with uh, a player for, for watching the, the video lecture. And here you can also be more specific. Mm? So instead of saying watching the latest video lecture, you can say watch the first three minutes, the last three minutes of the last video lecture. Mm? And this could be the same task or another task. Mm? Uh, so another task could be if you want to explore the video lectures or maybe you have still one task dedicated to the video lectures, you could be uh, watch the video lecture at twice the speed. Hmm? So you are going to explore if this bu those buttons works hmm? and if they are findable and clear. Um, well, success criteria, it's easy. No? The user is able to open and watch the video lecture on the web browser, etc. Uh, methodology, hmm? so let's say that here, so here, we can write something, and here, let's say, we can want to use the thing aloud. Hmm? So that the user, the participants, will tell us what is thinking from the home page to the right tab. Hmm? So again, imagine that he can think that the video lecture are on the material, and instead there are on the virtual classroom uh, tab, and then there is another, no, there is a longer process to find the, the, the latest video lecture. Hmm? If it's crawl, because maybe thinks that the latest is on the bottom instead is on the top of the list, etc. Hmm? So this could be interesting to have a thing out. So here, before task two, the facilitator needs to say, for this task, and maybe only this task, you need to think aloud and explain what think aloud is. And then, etc. Hmm? Task three, task four, hmm? you can stay on the video lecture page, you can go on the material, downloading material, downloading, not material, a specific set of slides, maybe, writing in the forum, uh, looking at a specific advice, news that is written there. Um, nothing else. Do you book exam in the, in the same, in the course page? No. But yeah, you can have, so we, we said the first, the, the, fir the goal is one, we choose one goal, that is the, the course, but if you just not, don't choose one mandatory goal, you pick three, you probably get information and material about the course, enrolling to an exam, and maybe another one. So if you pick three, we just pick one for, for starting that, but typically you don't pick only one, you pick more than one user goal, three, four, so the second goal could be uh, exams. So from here, you say another task is now enroll to the next available exam for this same course. Hmm? So the first, uh, the next available, so the first one that you find on the calendar. So the user needs to go back on the home page, scroll down, etc. I suppose. And for me, scroll down. So I suppose that is also for you. Hmm? Clicking there, opening another page, etc. Et so, okay, so we, we, we don't have time to continue, but this is more or less what you need to do for creating a plan. Uh, starting with, well, participants, target population, artifacts, material, and then after writing the task, you can also create some matrix, hmm, revise some decision you took before, like writing uh, which are these requirements. So you need the students with the human with interaction course, for sure, because you need that for the task, with all the section probably filled up, news, material, video lectures, etc. if you want to give the full, let's say, experience 
of everything. And then you need exams if you want to look at exams, etc. Hmm. And with that and the script, you can at that point start with the uh, usability test for, in this case, the Portale della Galattica. Okay? Any last minute question? Okay, so next le lesson we will start speaking about controlled experiment. That is another, the other kind of evaluation that we are going to see, but not experiment, let's say, in your prototype. Okay, so have a nice day and see you in two days. <laughs>